بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah We continue reflecting on very important matters in light of the Quran and the Sunnah and focusing on 10 traits of good character 10 traits of good character Alhamdulillah, we have reached the fifth trait, the fifth characteristic of good character, the fifth trait, the fifth characteristic of good manners, and that is as relates to the manners of going to sleep, the manners of going to sleep and the etiquette of going to sleep. The Musannif, Wafaqahullah, he says, Al Khamis, and fifthly, Ida Ataita Mabujiak Fatsawadba Wanam Ala Shikikal Ayman Watslu Ayat Al Kursi Marratan Wajma Kafeika Wakra Fihima Surat Al Ikhlas Wal Muawwidatain وَنْفُثْ فِيهِمَا وَمْسَحْ بِيهِمَا مَا اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْ جَسَدِكَ تَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ ثَلَاثًا The author, حَفِظَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى, he mentions, he says, And when you retire to your bed, and when you retire to your bed, they make wudu. And then lay down and sleep on your right side and recite Ayatul Kursi one time and put your hands together and recite therein Suratul Ikhlas and the last two chapters of the Quran. And spittle inside of your hands, any blow inside of your hands with the light spittle, and wipe over your body as much as you're able to reach. And do this three times. And do this three times. The author, the author, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned Al Adab Al Khamis. The fifth characteristic. The fifth characteristic. He mentions, he says, Min Adab al Ashara. From the ten characteristics. From the ten characteristics and traits of good behavior. And he mentions that this is as relates to going to sleep at night and retiring when one is about to go to sleep. Right? Um, Ma'adira. Now, he mentions that this is as relates to the adab, to the etiquette, and when one is going to retire to sleep at night. When one is going to retire to sleep at night. He says that inside of this, there are eight masail, there are eight affairs, there are eight issues that are linked to the proper etiquette of going to sleep. Naam. And one 
may say that there are other things that could be mentioned, but he wants to highlight these particular affairs due to their extreme importance. And there are other supplications that could be mentioned prior to going to sleep. And, uh, and it is encouraged that the students, that the listeners, that they will take the time, invest in themselves, and they learn the affairs that are mentioned if they are unaware of them, and they learn the affairs that are not mentioned from those supplications that are not mentioned, and they invest in themselves, bithnilahi ta'ala, because this is from the ways that we enrich ourselves, that we invest in ourselves to better our lives. Naam. Ala kulli hal, he mentions, he says that there are eight affairs that are linked to what he mentioned. So again, I encourage, like in other classes, I encourage every student, every listener to have a pen, to have a paper, so that they may write down some of these yani, points, so they write down these points and these masail, so that they are able to enumerate them as being eight. Unless you have a photographic memory and the like, and you don't need to use a pen and paper to to yani, gather and to hold on to retain the information, then okay, alhamdulillah. But if this is not the case, then I advise you to have a pen, have a paper, have a writing instrument, whatever that writing instrument is, whether it's old-fashioned, whether it's digital, yani, whatever, you know, whatever is suitable for you as an individual, then so you get the information down, inshallah ta'ala, in the most comfortable and efficient manner uh, for you as an individual. Okay, that makes sense? Like, the Shaykh he mentions, he says, in the first affair, is inside of the statement of the author, Firstly, what is intended by المضجع? What is intended by this? This is the place that a person sleeps when? In the, in, the, in, in the afternoon, in the morning, when? Bilayl. Bilayl. Naam. This is, a pers this is where a person, they sleep at night time. Bayyip. Now a person, they may say, where do we get this understanding? Because it was not mentioned at night. It was not mentioned at the time of the day. The Shaykh, he mentions, and he brings a point from the language that we can benefit from, Bithnilahi Ta'ala. And he mentions, he says, فَإِذَا أَطْلَقِ الْمَضْجِعِ That, يعني عند العرب العرب إذا أطلقت المضجع فتريد به محل النوم من الليل That when the Arab, when they utilize this word مضجع Then what was intended by it was the place that you sleep at night time It was intended by it, the place that you sleep at night time So if they say, so if they said المضجع Alone like that, without linking it to anything else, then what was intended is where you go to sleep at night. Naam, where you go to sleep at night. Naam, for in al Arab, because it comes inside of the yani, the traditions and the customs of the Arab, is that in the Arab, from their customs, is that when they retire to go to sleep at night, then they will go to sleep at night in one place. Naam. In a mawdi'in wahidin. They will sleep in one place. It was, it was, yeah, he said. وَأَمَّا فِي النَّوْمِ النَّهَارِ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَلْزِمُونَ مَوْضِعًا وَاحِدًا But when it came to them sleeping in the daytime, then they didn't stick to just one place. They didn't stick to just one place. So perhaps... If they were shepherds, they will يعني, sleep in various different pastures as they were tending to their flocks. Or if they were, for example, merchants and they had stores and businesses, perhaps they may sleep at the business in the back, يعني, somewhere, and the like. So during the daytime, they didn't sleep in just one place. So you'll find it was customary amongst the Arab that during the day, they may sleep somewhere other than where they sleep at night. They may sleep somewhere other than in their bedroom. Okay? To put it in uh, yani, other ways, other words, to, to phrase it another way. They may sleep outside of their bedroom. Okay? So they may sleep in the, in, in the break room at the job or they may sleep, yani, you know, where they will take a nap in, in, in the daytime. 
Whereas at nighttime, they will customarily sleep in one place at night. And this is customary for most people, is that where they sleep at nighttime is in one place. They sleep in one designated area at night. And there's some wisdom behind this. And, and that is typically because the sleep at night, when a person sleeps at night, that sleep is typically a sleep that is a deeper sleep. So therefore, an added layer of security usually is needed in order to sleep in such a way and comfortably in such a deep sleep. So therefore, at nighttime, you will find they will sleep inside of their, their homes. Whereas throughout the day, the sleep that a person will sleep during the day will take a cat nap, for example, and the like. Then this is a sleep that is not as deep as the sleep than one sleeps at nighttime. So being in an area that is a little less secure is okay and suitable for this type of sleep and the like. So this is just some, some of the wisdoms why typically individuals you find when they sleep at night is different than when they sleep during the day because this, their sleep at night is typically different than the manner in which they sleep during the day. Right? So the statement of the author also linked to this first point uh, where he says, and make wudu, make wudu. What is intended by wudu? Right. Al wudu, either utliq, yuradu bihi al wudu, as shara'i. That wudu, if it is said like this, then what is intended by it is the legislative wudu, like the wudu for salah, like the wudu that a person they will make before performing the salah. So prior to sleep, then it is from the sunnah that an individual they make wudu. That an individual they make will do, and as um, homework, as homework, inshallah ta'ala for the listener, right? Is that I want you to go and find the hadith that mentions the benefit and the superiority of making wudu before going to sleep. I want you to go and find the hadith of the yani that mentions the superiority of making wudu before going to sleep. Naam, uh, ta'ala, and thus. The student has to has to be active and proactive and seeking after their benefit. We can't be from individuals who come to a class, any given class, and think that we're going to get one hundred percent everything from said class. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. Just like it doesn't work like that in any other place. It's like it doesn't work like that. Yeah, you know, anywhere in the in the dunya. Likewise, it doesn't work like that here, and as it relates to this. So therefore. An individual, you're going to have to also do your own yani, research that, uh, that is uh, applicable and related to the subject matter if you truly want to benefit, if you truly want to benefit and take it to that next level. Now, so inshallah ta'ala, again, this is yani, uh, also another indication highlighting that there are other yani, uh, mannerisms, there are other mannerisms and etiquettes that are related to go prior to going to sleep. That inshallah, I encourage everyone to go to do some research and to look up those ahadith that are related to the adhkar, to the supplications when going to sleep, and that mention the superiority and the virtue and the benefit that one will get when they make those supplications. Naam, when they make those supplications. And bithnillahi ta'ala, this is what this is in benefiting ourselves. This is in concerning ourselves with that which is beneficial to us. This is from spending our time in a good way. Because, I mean, many of us, how much time do we waste throughout the day pursuing things that have no real beneficial value to us? And then when it comes to the simple, basic things, uh, like what we're mentioning here, you find that there are many of us who are unaware of a lot of aspects of this. And really, that's a shame because these are things that we should know and we should know well. These are things that we should uh, teach our children, that our children should know and that they should know well and the like. But when we go over a lot of times, unfortunately, those things that we know well and you know, how beneficial they are for us in our life, then we find in, in many cases, you know, they have no benefit at all. They have no benefit to us. They don't add no increase to the value of our lives. They don't you know, you know, increase uh, us in any which way, shape and form. But yet we're very keen to know about it. Whereas things that actually will bring benefit to us, that will increase us, that will increase our situation and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of times we are lacking as it relates to these particular topics and that that is a shame. That is a shame. Alakulihan, in any event. Um, uh, the Sheikh, he goes on, he mentioned the second, the second affair. Okay, so the first affair, the first affair was linked to what is meant by uh, Mabuja, 
what is meant by Mulder That's the first affair. And what is meant by Wubu. Okay? So, Mulder Jack, then it means the place that you will retire to sleep at night time. And what is meant by Wubu? Hey, the Wubu that we will make like before uh, Salah. Now, that you make this, that you make Wubu before going to bed. And then the second affair is linked to the statement of the author, Hafidhullahu <laughs> Ta'ala, as he mentions, he says, وَنَمْ عَلَىٰ شِقِّكَ ayman And to lay down to sleep, yani, on your right side. اَيْ عَلَىٰ جَنْبِكَ الْأَيْمَنْ On your right side, min jasadik. To lay on your right side. To lay down on your right side, yani, and to sleep on your right side. This is from good Yani uh, etiquette. This is from the good character as relates to sleeping. Third, the third point that is linked to this affair of the etiquettes of sleeping, uh, and but yani, you know, the etiquettes of getting ready to go to bed, is in his statement, what's lu ayat al kursi maratan, and to read ayat al kursi one time, and to read. Ayat al-Kursi, one time. Now, as it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that before going to sleep, then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will read Ayat al-Kursi, one time. Now, then he will read Ayat al-Kursi, one time. And this is from the Sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So here is an indication, again, highlighting and showing us those things that we should be concerning ourselves with. And that is, is that if there are individuals from us who are unaware of Ayat al Kursi, then this is an opportunity for them to become familiarized with Ayat al Kursi. If there are individuals from amongst us, who have yet to memorize Ayatul Kursi, then this is an opportunity for us to memorize Ayatul Kursi. Ayatul Kursi is tremendously important area that each and every Muslim, they should know and they should know it well. Likewise, they should know the meaning of it and they should study its tafsir, inshallah ta'ala, because there are many occasions that we will utilize this tremendous area inside of our daily life. Inside of our daily now, inside of our daily life, so it behooves us to become familiar with it. For those who are unfamiliar with it, and as a and as a review, Ayat al Kursi, it is the two hundred and fifty fifth ayah from Surah Al Baqarah, from the second chapter of the Quran, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Allahu la ilaha illahu al Hayyu al Qayyum, la taqhudhu sinatu wa la nawm." له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤدوه حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى he says here in this tremendous ayah, what translated means, Allah, none has the right to be worshipped in truth, but He, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtake Him. To Him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is on earth. Who is He that can intercede with Him except with his permission he knows what happens to them meaning his creatures in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter and they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills his kursi extends over the heavens and the earth and he feels no fatigue and guarding and preserving them, meaning the heavens and the earth and yani, everything. And he is the most high, the most great. He is the most high, the most great, the most magnificent. This ayah, this ayah to the Kursi, in it, 
a lot of benefit. But again, we leave that for the listeners' homework. To go and seek what is the tafsir of Ayat al-Kursi. Naam. To go and read what is the tafsir of Ayat al-Kursi. And Al-Alama, Al-Shaykh Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he has a tremendous book that has been translated into the English language that explains Ayat al-Kursi. So I encourage the listener, the viewer, to go and find this book, Bithnilahi Ta'ala, to read it and to study from it, insha'Allah, so that you may benefit. Ala kulli hal, the Shaykh, the Shaykh Salih al usaymi the author of this tremendous book, he brings a benefit. He brings a benefit here for the listener, for the viewer, for the reader, yani for those who read this book. He said, وَسُمِّيَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ آيَةِ الْكُرْسِ He said in this ayah, it has been named Ayat al-Kursi. Naam. The Kursi is the footstool. It's a footstool. Naam. لِنْفَرَادِهَا بِذِكْرِ الْكُرْسِ الْإِلَاهِ Because it is mentioned in it, the, the Kursi of the Most High. Naam. It is mentioned here, the Kursi, the, the footstool of the Most High. Naam. وَلَمْ يَقْعَ ذِكْرُ الْكُرْسِ الْإِلَاهِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ and the mention of the Kursi, it is not mentioned in the Quran except in this ayah. This is the only ayah in the Quran that mentions the Kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there, there is a benefit for us from that standpoint in that uh, this is the only ayah in the Quran that mentions the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is meant by tilawa huna, what is meant by tilawa a qira'a, it means to read it. Right? What's meant by recital here or tilawa, it means here that you read it or you recite it. Okay? Well, asl tilawa, and this is because in the language, the origin of the word tilawa, it means al ittiba'a. And this is a benefit again a, from a language standpoint. That in the language, at tilawa the origin meaning of it, or the original meaning of it, right, or its origin, is that what it means? al ittiba' It means to follow. It means to follow. at tilawa yani al ittiba' It means to follow something. Okay? Wa tatanawa'u ma'aniha bihasmi mawaqi'iha min al-kalam. And... Its meaning will change depending upon where it is in, this, in, in, in the context of the speech. So depending upon the contents that it, the context that is used inside of the speech, then that will determine the meaning of tilawa. Okay? So here, وَمَنْهَا tilawa to Quran, And from the meanings that enter into what is the word tilawa, is meaning like the tilawa of the Quran, meaning to recite the recital. Now, a person may say, well, what is the connection between the meaning inside of the language and the meaning here as used in this context, right? Because in the language, it means that one thing follows another thing, okay? Tilawa and ittiba that one thing will follow something else, okay? Like this, they'll follow each other. Okay, like, so how, how do we get... Re recital from this. How do we get a recitation from this meaning? The Sheikh he mentions, um, which is a very good point of benefit from the language standpoint, a qira'atuhu bittiba' ba'dihi one. That here it means recital because when you recite something, portions of it follow other portions. So when you recite the ayah, naam, when you recite the Quran, they're going to be words that follow other words. And you have to bring them together. Follow them yeah, up one by one together. And that's why it's called, yeah, referred to as tilawa. Because the words are following other words. The words are following other words. And you have to bring them together. Now, that makes sense? The fourth, the fourth affair, the fourth affair is that in his statement, what 
كفيك and bring together your كفيك طيب وهما باطنا اليد and what is the كف the كف then it means and is referred to here as the inside of the hand نعم the كف what is meant by كف here is the inside of the hand right that you bring them that you bring them together right here so every hand every hand because again in the, remember in the Arabic language a hand can refer to anything from your fingertips to here right to your to your elbow all of this is the hand yet okay but what is intended by yet here it means kef and this is this right this 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 portion of it and what is intended primarily from this portion then it means the inside of the the inside of the hand right your palms that means your palms that makes sense okay so when the sheikh he says and bring them together it means you will bring your hands together in the manner like when you make dua like when you make dua and you bring your hands together when you make dua then this is what it means by you bring your hands together like this like when you make dua but you will bring it close to you ma'am so it wouldn't be like you know with your hands extended away from you but you will bring your hands together close to you like like when you make dua like this and you will recite until your hands and that brings us to the fifth the fifth point from the eight eight points that the sheikh mentions as related to the etiquette of going to bed and that is waqra fihima and you read you recite into them meaning your your palms you read into your palms right like this you bring them close to your face and then you recite into them you recite until into your palms what do you recite into your palms? You recite into your palms Surah Al Ikhlas, Surah Al Surah Al Ikhlas, wa Mu'awwidatain, and you recite the last two chapters of the Quran, and you recite the last two chapters of the the Quran. Nam. Nam. And you recite the the last two chapters of the Quran. Right. Surah Al Ikhlas. Let me know this is Allah Taala statement. Qul hu Allahu ahad to the end of the chapter. To the end of the chapter. Naam. And the last two chapters of the Quran. Let me know they are Qul a'udhu bi Rabbi Falaq to the end of the chapter and the last chapter of the Quran then we know it is قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ to the end of the chapter yeah. so again these are very important chapters so if we are, don't know them yet then we should strive to learn them because they are tremendously important and these chapters we will use them multiple times every day Naam, multiple times every single day. So it behooves us to memorize them. Naam, so that we have them with us always. And the Shaykh he mentions, he says, that we will read inside of them, meaning in what? Inside of our hands, these chapters, three times. Three times. Ayatul Kursi is once. One time. Whereas when we recite the last three chapters of the Quran into our hands, we make it yeah, like this, huh? then we will do that three times, three times, okay? That brings us to the sixth, that brings us to the sixth aspect of good character and from the etiquettes of going to sleep, and that is, as the Shaykh mentioned, one fourth fihima, that we will spittle inside of our hands now and the spittle inside of the hands then this will come after all three chapters are recited after all three chapters are recited and then when you recite them you're going to recite inside your hand to into your hand and then you're going to spittle now and this is what is meant by one fourth 
bihima one fourth it means a spittle a bihima a fikafake that inside of our palms then we're going to uh spittle now we're going to spittle when nefeth hua and nefhu ma'ariq latif then it is yani as like when yani yakun al hawa yani mundafi'u min al fam mashuban بريق لطيف منه that we will breathe out we will breathe out and there will be a company with this breath that goes into our hands like pieces of of of, of spittle yani i don't know how else to say it in english except yani we will spittle inside of our hands like like this you know not not uh, spit no 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 but spittle makes sense like we will spit on inside of our hands three times now or excuse me we will spit on inside of our hands and the whole of this will be done three times and the sheikh is going to mention how is the manner of doing all of this three times right um because it doesn't mean that we'll recite and then we you know who who put three times no 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 but the sheikh is going to mention okay so we then we will spit on inside of our hands and then after we spit on inside of our hands this brings us to the third or oh, excuse me to the seventh point of etiquette of yani uh, the good manners and etiquette of getting ready to go to sleep and that is wamsah bihima mastata'ta min jasadik is that you will wipe with them what you are able to reach from your body that you will wipe with them after you have recited and then spit out then you will wipe what you are able to reach from your body when masah huwa Imrar and what is meant by mess here to yani to touch was meant here means to rub means to rub so then you will rub on your body whatever you are able to reach fa idha qara'a as-sura thalatha yani as-sur al-thalath so once you have read the three chapters thumma nafatha fi kafay aw fi kafay and then he will blow meaning spittle inside of his hands then masaha the cafe he must thaa min jasadi then he will wipe what he was able to wipe from his body a ma yasilu ilayhi aadatan duna takalluf meaning that which he was able to wipe customarily ordinarily without any type of exaggeration or without any type of yani going um, you know uh, like extra effort or extending himself beyond that which is customary and ordinary meaning that he will reach what he was able to reach ala hal allati huwa alayha min al imtidad meaning he would reach what he would reach whatever he was able to reach from the position that he was in he would and go beyond bounds or he would and go in, yani to reach and, and and put forth for unnecessary effort to reach things that he was unable to reach that were outside of his reach naam فالممتد على ظهره يعني عند إرادة نومه إذا جمع كفيه وقرأ ثم نفث ثم أراد المسح بالغ في المسح فيهما ينال يده عادة من جسده نعم ولم ولم يتكلف ما ما يبعد عنه عادة نعم is that when a person will get ready so they would sit down يعني on the, on the edge of the bed and the like they will recite or they will sit up in the bed and they will recite right and then they you know bring their hands together right bring their hands together then they will recite then they will spit on inside of their hands and then they will wipe whatever they were able to reach from their body but they will wipe whatever they were able to comfortably reach from their body without putting a burden upon themselves by reaching to those parts that were far from them that without the further extension they wouldn't be able to reach so they would reach what they can reach from their body and that was it that was it naam and this is what is from the sunnah and the sheikh he highlights something that is a mistake that individuals do and he says fa min al khata al waqi' and from the mistakes that happen from the mistakes that happen and that is what raddu shay min min al jasad ibtigha al masah naam فانه من الناس فانه من الناس من يرد رجله الثانيه نعم الثانيا 
لها حتى يمسح قدمه. And from people is that they will extend, they will bring up their leg, they will bring their leg all the way up until they're able to wipe their foot. Right? They'll bring their leg all the way up until they're able to wipe their foot. ثم يفعل بيده الأخرى مثل ذلك and then he'll do the same thing with the other foot. ويبالغ في إمرار كفيه على جسده so he will go, he will he will extend. نعم he will unnecessarily extend. Um, يعني from and, and reach areas from his body so that they they reach the whole of the body. نعم so that they reach all of the body. And the Sheikh he says وهذا مخالف and this is contrary. This is contrary to what is proper. This is contrary to what is proper. Because of that which has come inside of the hadith. hadith, Because what comes inside of the hadith is that That the Prophet he used to wipe what he was able to reach from his body. That's it. That he will wipe whatever he was able to naturally and comfortably reach from his body from that position. Naam. وَمَا يَصْرِ إِلَيْهِ عَادَةً دُونَ تَكَلُّفْ And what he was able to reach customarily and naturally without overextending. Without overextending. Naam. So it is not from the sunnah that an individual, they touch every part of their body. But rather whatever they are able to reach comfortably, then this is what they, this is what they will touch, is what they would this is what they will wipe. Naam. And when a person would do that, يعني, then they will begin by wiping their face and their head. Right? So they will recite. Right? They will recite. They will spittle. And then they will wipe their face. They wipe their head. And what they're able to reach comfortably from their body. Naam. This is, what, this is how they would do it. Whatever they were comfortable to reach from their body. And the eighth and the last affair as linked to this particular topic and what was presented by the Shaykh uh, Ta'ala and that is يعني, قوله, inside of his statement and they would do this three times. They would do it three times. Naam. A. تكرروا القراءة والنث و وال... نعم والنفث والمسح is that they will repeat the reciting the spittle and the wiping that they will repeat these three three times مرة بعد مرة they will they will they will do it one, one after another right so in other words Let's break it down so it's easy. Person, he put, he brings his hands together. Okay, they recite the last three surahs. Then they spit them inside their hands, right? Then they wipe their they wipe their body what they're able to reach from their body. That's one time. Then again, put their hands together. They recite the last three chapters. They will spit to the side of their hands. Then they will wipe what they're able to reach. That's two times. Then they put their hands together, recite the last three chapters, spittle inside of their hands, wipe what they're able to reach three times. That's how they that's 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 how they that's how they will do it. Now that's how they will do it. And this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to do it like that. So my question to everyone, right? Before you go to sleep, how how is that how is that how does that look for you? Does it look like this? Because this is from the etiquette of going to sleep, and this is from the prophetic sunnah, and there's a lot of benefit that is contained therein, and there are other other car supplications that an individual could could make, uh, uh, and the like. But the Sheikh he brings a, a added benefit, and then he mentions that this type of spittle and the signing of these three chapters. Then there t there comes two situations inside of the uh, inside of the dean, two situations inside a person who needing his life, where he would utilize this same method, 
but he utilized the same method, the same method that was aforementioned. They utilize the same method. They come two different times. Ahaduhuma, the first, and nafthu biha, and the noun, wahuwa mathkur huna. And that is to spittle inside of their hands and to yani, wipe and so on and so forth. Right? And uh, you you're reciting these three chapters like what we're talking about right now. Like what we're talking about right now. Okay? But what's the second time that we'll use this? Because this is yani, the stuff we need to know. When's the second time that we can use this? That we can recite these three chapters right, into our hands, spittle in our hands, and then wipe. When, when, when is that second time? The Shaykh he mentions when nafthu biha and al marad is when a person is sick. When a person is sick, this is from the ways that we make ruqya ala man, ala nafsi upon himself or ala ghayri or upon other than himself. Naam? So now let me ask you this. When you get sick, or your child gets sick, or your wife gets sick, right? Um, is this from your treatment? Do you treat that said sickness, said ailment with this? Because if not, why not? How come you don't use it? There's a lot of benefit in it. There's a lot of benefit in it. This is from the legislative medicine. This is from the legislative medicine. And this is from those medicines that require no resources. You don't have to spend money to buy this medicine. You don't need a prescription. Yeah, I need to go and fill this medicine. You don't have to go to the drugstore. Yeah, I need in order to, to get this medicine. It's, it's, it's free. It's at your disposal. So if we're not using it, the answer becomes why? why? How come we're not using it? We should use it. This is beneficial. This is extremely beneficial. Right? Anakulli um, hal. The Shaykh, he mentions, he says that this is the manner that a person will use. So when a person is sick, right, you, you're suffering from a sickness, and you want to, and you want to make ruqya upon yourself, then this is what you would do. You would recite inside your hand, spit and then wipe, right? Likewise, a person can do it for themselves, or they can do it upon other than themselves. So they can do it for someone else. So they can, yeah, they, uh, you know, recite, spit and then wipe over their child, or wipe over their spouse, or wipe over the sick person, right? This is medicine we should be utilizing. And if not, why not? Why not? How come we're not using it? <clears throat> and all of this, uh, as the Shaykh he mentioned, is done three times as it comes to the side of the hadith of Aisha. Bukhari, min hadith Aisha, anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my mother Aisha, she narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when he would retire to bed every night, right, he would bring his hands together, right, uh, uh, he would, he would uh, spit to inside of them and then he would recite inside of them. Naam. As, and as, as we know what, what yani, um, what is intended is that what is that he would he would bring his hands together, he would recite and then he would spit. Okay? But he would recite Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, Qul A'udhu bi Rabbi Falaq, wa Qul A'udhu bi Rabbi Nas. Naam, he would recite that. Thumma yam sah bihima mastafa'a min jasidi. And then he would wipe what he was able to reach from his from his body. Alright? But and he will start that with his head and face. Now, so he'll recite, and then he will start wiping with what? With his head and with his face. Huh? Like this. He will start wiping. Okay? Uh, and what he was able to reach from his body. And what he was able to reach from his body. Right? And again, remember, what a person is able to reach from their body without overextending themselves beyond what they can easily reach. Without what they can easily reach. That makes sense? But, and then our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, وَيَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ And then he would do that three times. Three times. And that's why the Shaykh he mentions, and do it three times. Okay? But, also, 
what could be recited and what should be recited before going to sleep. And this is an additional benefit. The Sheikh Hineh mentioned this additional benefit. And um, is kind of helping you a little bit with the homework and now by mentioning this one. But there's more stuff too. But So I don't want you to say, oh, well, you, you said it, so it's no homework, right? No, it's still homework. I'm not going to give you all the answers, but I'll give you uh, a couple more. Okay? Is that what? Well, I'll give you one more. Right? Give me one more. And, and is that uh, to recite, as it comes in hadith, yani hadith, mutafaqun uh, alay, is hadith that is agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim, and it's from the hadith of uh, Abi Mas'ud, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and in Abi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, من قرأ بالآيتين من آخر سورة البقرة في الليلة كفتا, that whoever recites the last two chapters, uh, excuse me, the last two verses, whoever recites the last two verses from Surah Al-Baqarah in a night time, then it will suffice them. They will, it will suffice them. Naam. So if you recite uh, the last two chap, the last two verses from the second chapter, the last two verses from the second chapter from Surah Al-Baqarah, then it will suffice an individual for that night. Now, again, this is an opportunity for us if we don't know the last two uh, 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 verses from Surah Al-Baqarah to memorize them, to take some time, invest in ourselves, and to memorize these two verses. This is very important. Now, especially the, the youth, it's the summertime now, and the youth, they are not in school. Okay, it's summer vacation. So over the summer vacation, you should have a list of things you want to accomplish, dean-wise. Okay, it's like the school; they may in their in their syllabus they may have summer reading, where there's certain books you have to read in the summertime, and you know all this type of stuff. Okay, but you should have even more enthusiasm and an even better list for what you're going to accomplish, dean-wise. So everyone should have a um to have goals of that which they want to accomplish during the break during the break from school okay and from those goals that if you don't have it you should you already put it on your list of goals uh is that you should memorize i to courtesy if you have not memorized it and you should memorize the last two verses from surah al-baqarah Naam, that that should be on your summertime learning list, okay? And um, some of the adhkar that are connected to going to sleep and the etiquettes of going to sleep, naam, uh, and the like. So again, just as to reiterate the homework for those who will undertake it and who are concerned about benefiting themselves is to go over those proofs and those evidences that, that mention the adhkar, the supplications that are to be recited before going to sleep, to look at the merit and the benefit and the superiority of those adhkar and how one will benefit and what they will get if they would yani, recite them and, and so on and so forth. Huh? And to memorize um, uh, and to make sure to go over a to courtesy the last two verses from Surah Al-Baqarah and if they have not memorized the last three chapters of the Qur'an to memorize the last three chapters of the Qur'an because these are things that we are going to need daily in our day-to-day -day. and it's important that stuff you're going to need in your day-to-day -day that you get it you understand and this is going to be of extreme benefit and this is from those traits and those characteristics of good character the person that has good character, you will find that they are a person who they employ these traits, these etiquettes prior to going to sleep and when they go to sleep each and every night. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who have good character. So Allah ta'ala, you wa fiqni wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yarudha wa an yaja'alana mubarakan haythu ma kunna wa an yaja'alana min man idha u'tiya shakar wa dhubutuli ya sabar وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان السعادة هذا إلى اللقاء
استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته